So let's take about 30 seconds to walk through an exercise where I'm going to show you the value of visual analytics. So if you're looking at the set of numbers, try to count the number of times that 5 occurs. Okay, this usually takes people about 20 seconds, and most of the time they get the answer incorrect. But if I were to highlight the fives and make it easier for you to read, you would see that there are eight fives and it would probably take you about a tenth of the time that it would if I didn't highlight the fives. So that's a quick example of why visual analytics is so powerful. So let's leverage this power to communicate information about our HR data much more clearly and in less time. And we might do that with a dashboard. So this is an example of a strategic HR dashboard. We might have gotten this just through an email. Someone might have emailed it to us or we might have a subscription to this dashboard that automatically sends us a snapshot of what the current state is. And if we want to drill in and look at more details, we can just click this and it will jump us directly to that dashboard. And we don't need any software to install or maintain on our PCs. We just need a browser up here. So in this strategic dashboard, we've got four key metrics that we're concerned with. If they're orange, they're of concern. If they're blue, they're okay. Then we've got some other HR viz links we're going to look at in a little bit. But let's tackle these ones in orange. So right now we can see that our managers are only 19% female right now. That's an issue. Like we would like that to be closer to 50% naturally. So let's look at this in more detail. We just follow the cue to click the screen for more detail and we get more detail down below. So the females that work in management roles, only 19% compared to 50% of employees who are females that do not work in management roles. That's a very big discrepancy and we want to work to remedy that. And we can validate that further by looking at the management breakup. So males constitute 81% of managers. So let's, again, follow the cue on the screen. We'll click any bar to see the open management positions. And here they are. So here are those open positions. In blue, we see the men that have applied for those positions. And the shape, if it's an X, it tells us that they do not fit the requirements. So we can see that Brenda Bridges, she applied for this. She fits the requirements. Well, we'd like to further along this hiring process. So maybe we want to follow this cue on the screen again, click that check mark to contact the hiring manager, and send an email to Eleanor, who's the hiring manager. Say, hey, we'd like to be involved in this. If she's truly a fit, let's expedite the, uh, the hiring process. So in this case, we've taken analytics all the way through to driving some action. We've contacted the hiring manager. We want to be involved in speeding that process up so we can change this female management percentage, get it closer to 50%. Okay. Now let's proceed to the next one, new hire attrition. So 33% of employees with tenure less than one year no longer with the company, that's an issue. If we look down below, we can see these little two-year buckets over here. Uh, looks like the people that have zero to two years are 58% turned over this year. That's a big concern. So again, what I can do is just click any one of these points down below by following that prompt on the screen, and I can see what their reasons are for leaving. So the people with zero years, they're mostly considering, or they mostly left because they were pursuing other opportunities. And one person left to further their education. So is that normal for everything? We can highlight all these marks and see. And no, it's not. So there's a big time issue with our new hires, or people with less than two years leaving the company to pursue other opportunities. So this opens us up to have a conversation with the people in charge of uh, helping retain employees to say, what can we do to help people pursue opportunities within the company so that they don't have to leave? Okay, so we're content with that. We're gonna clear that out and we'll come over here now to our projected turnover. So for this one, again, projected to turnover one out of every four employees almost, that's a paramount concern to uh, any operations manager. So what we wanna do is drill in and find more details why. So if I follow this prompt on the screen, it's going to take me to a different dashboard here. It's not going to use this little part down here because I want to do some deeper analytics. So I select that and it takes me to my high flight risk analytics dashboard. And it shows me the people that are high flight risk are 94 versus my total current employees, which are 388. So 24% of those people are projected to be high flight risks. That's, that's again, a pretty big concern. So let's continue to walk down the dashboard. Where are they? Well, here's our org structure. We can minimize this and see it at a higher level where they are. They're mostly in sales. Or we can drill into that a little bit deeper. And we can see that they're very likely, or they are actually at Lion Partners in sales. So again, big concern there with Lion sales. 
Um, and then we can look over here, see where they are geographically, and they're spread out all over the place. Then down below, we can ask questions like why. So why are they leaving? So what factors are weighing in to our flight score here? So these are some of the more important factors, the ones with a, a higher influence on the flight score, and those are things like manager grade. So if they don't like their manager, they have a higher chance of leaving. So maybe we want to drill down into that a little bit more. So we'll just say keep only our manager grade there. And we can always revert back, but here we've got a pretty clear picture of what those manager grades are, and we can see that line really trending down. So the higher flight score, the worse grade usually that a manager has. And that makes sense. No one wants to work for a bad manager. But let's see some of the interactivity here. Like maybe we have a question. Let's just hone in on sales for line partners. So we can just select that and see what line partner sales are. So there are some pretty bad management grades over here on the right. There's also not some bad management grades over here. But again, maybe this opens up a conversation for us to have with line partner sales management to see what things they're doing or things they could be doing better to retain employees. Okay, let's come back home now. So we've got these other links over here and we can analyze any one of these. So let's just take a quick look at some of them. So we've got departmental box ratings. So very similar to what I have here for the entire company. I've got additional ratings that I can look at for any individual department in my company. So maybe I don't want to see sales there. Maybe I want to see finance. I can apply that and see these different boxes. So one of those boxes disappeared because people in finance aren't measured on that uh, specific measure. Similarly, we can check out something like our labor force. If we're hiring a lot in a place like Iowa, we might want to see where people are unemployed, where there are potential uh, people that can fill gaps in our, our job openings. Maybe we want to check out the labor force or the unemployment rate in certain uh, areas of the state, and we can hone in on certain counties. If we have a recruiting site, it might be helpful to analyze that site to see are we really driving potential leads to conversions? So are people actually applying for open jobs? So we can check out all this stuff and maybe we don't want to look at North America, we want to see Europe. So immediately this updates with information about Europe and we can see our conversion is actually dropping. So maybe we changed the website early on and that led to the change in conversion. We made a bad change. We might want to, again, have a conversation with the web developer or the person that maintains that site to revert it back to the way it originally was. And this one's just really useful for HR, and that's succession planning. So in this, we've got a scatter plot that shows the age and years of people by department and the number of employees. And we can explicitly call out something like a danger zone here. So if I want to highlight this mark that's in the danger zone, it will show me that this department access they really need to spend some time on a succession plan because they've got a lot of older employees, and that's a concern. If these people leave or they retire, then you know where do they stand? So again, it at least opens up an avenue for people to discuss these things like succession planning. There's plenty of additional information available on how to use Tableau for HR data. If you're interested, just come to tableau.com and search HR, or just go directly to this URL. Uh, this is where I came to, to get information for this presentation. Uh, there are some great videos out there from some very reputable companies on how they use Tableau to help them just work a lot faster on their data using Tableau. And then there are some sample visualizations out there that you can download and reuse yourself. And there's some general guidance papers on how to create the right visualization for uh, the purpose you're trying to create it for. All right. So let me show you one more thing in Tableau that can help you, especially with HR data where information is really sensitive, and that's using Tableau Server to share data in a secure way. So let's say that we've got people's performance, like I've got name here, I've also got um, an ID field that I created, and then also their performance information. So yeah, this is pretty sensitive stuff. So we might not want to allow everyone on our team to see their names. So I can take name off there, but the ID still holds there. Right? So the ID is just this calculated field I did with a random number assignment. And now let's say that I want to share this with other people on my team. So I want to hide that name field, and now I want to share this lens of my data with those people on my team. So I will publish just this lens, not the entire visualization, but just the lens to my data to those people. So I'll call this uh, performance info, and name is not visible. That will be my description. Maybe I send it to this project, HR, okay? So now I publish that, it says okay. 
Now when people come to connect to a data source, they don't go to that backend database. What they do is they go through Tableau Server, they grab that lens so they can search for, uh, what was it, performance information. And now they just lock onto that lens and it bypasses stuff like the name. I wouldn't be able to see people's name there, but they can do analysis using the ID. So they might want to see like, well, hey, here's the ID. What's my performance scores? What would be a good way to look at that? I don't know, maybe with a box plot. So we have this one person that's really killing it up here. You know, that's an anomaly. Let's see what they're doing right, and let's share that with the rest of our team. But again, the data server, using these lenses of data, it's really powerful in Tableau. So at this point, I, I've shown a bunch of stuff on just general visualization, some best practices, how Tableau can help you share data or just render information properly. Uh, what I would ask you to do at this point is just think about some of the repetitive things you're doing in HR today, maybe just with spreadsheets, that can be done with Tableau to help you save a lot of time and also work more effectively.